Hey, it's Mike. I'm back with another generative AI tutorial. At some point in building AI apps, you're going to have certain processes which take a long time and you want to be able to queue all those tasks up in the order in which they were received. So each user gets a slot in the queue and then you process those tasks in order that they came in and you notify the user when those tasks are done and you need to be able to keep track of whose job belongs to whom, what the priority is, and things like that. So, for example, in my app PodQuest, I am transcribing podcasts. And if I had multiple users, I'd want to be able to keep track of these jobs. And, and this transcription can take a while. As you can see here, I'm starting up my server, and I'm chunking the audio, and then it's going to transcribe the audio, and it's going to compile it all into a single transcript. So that job takes a while. And if there are many users trying to do this all at once, I'm going to need some system to manage that. One reason to do this is this can be expensive and you just don't want to be spending unlimited amounts of money processing all these multiple tasks. The other is that it's really hard on your server. And so you need a server that can scale to accomplish these sorts of things. So I'm using Whisper for my transcription. That's a fraction of a cent per minute, but I am transcribing audio files that are sometimes an hour or more long and that can add up. So one way to handle this is using something called Bull. Bull is a background job processing library for Node.js. And these two windows give a pretty good rundown of what Bull can do. It consists essentially of a queue for all your tasks and then a worker that accomplishes that task. So you could have multiple queues, multiple workers, etc. In this example, they're creating a paint queue that's painting cars, and they're specifying a worker that can process that job of painting the car. And they're specifying a concurrency of up to 100 simultaneous tasks. So this website lists all the things that Bull can do, and it runs on Redis. And Redis is, in addition to being a database, a cache management library that can also act as a message broker. So that's what we're going to be using Redis for is to manage the messaging for our server. Now, in order to incorporate these things into the library, we have to install both Redis and Bull. So in a terminal window here, I'm using Mac. And so there's instructions on how to do this for various systems, depending on whatever you're running. I'm on a Mac, so I'm just going to do brew install Redis. Let that run. I already have it installed, so it should be quick. And then the other thing you're going to want to do is from the root of your application, you're going to want to install Bull MQ. Now that we have that, what I'm going to want to do is import that library. This is our configuration. So we're going to import that queue and that worker from Bull. Then we're going to specify the Redis URL that we're using. And you notice I'm pulling this from my .env file and referencing a variable called Redis URL. So if this were my ENV, I would specify it for localhost like this. Now, on my server, I'm using Heroku, which is an ephemeral file server. So the URL for this could constantly be changing. So I'm going to show you if you're using Heroku or something like that, how to do that in a bit. But otherwise, just make sure on your server where you're hosting this, you have that environment variable as well. So once we have that URL, we can instantiate a queue, pass along that Redis URL, and give it a name. I'm just calling it an LLM queue. And now, in the job that I want to queue, here I was before calling transcribe episode and passing it all these parameters. Now I'm going to call that worker. So I'm going to say to our queue, add this worker called transcribe pass it all the same parameters, and then we need to instantiate that worker. So I'm just calling it LLM worker. It's got that name of LLM, and it's going to run this asynchronous job, which accepts all of the parameters via this job.data object key. And then remember before we were calling transcribe episode directly, now we're just awaiting the results of that inside this worker. And once that's done, we move the job to complete. 
And that's essentially all you need to do to process these background tasks. Now, I'm going to add a couple of other listeners, and these work just like click event listeners in JavaScript. And so we're saying for the LLM worker, when it's completed, it will receive that job. And we could say job.id is completed. We just log that out in the console. And here is where you'd want to do your more complex logic. Maybe you're emailing someone saying, hey, here's your transcript. Click here to download it. Maybe you're relying on them being on your website, receiving a message sort of asynchronously. That's where you would communicate from the server to the client to allow them to move to the next stage of whatever your queue was initially set up to accomplish. So let's just add a to-do statement there for each of these to implement that functionality. I mentioned I am hosting my app on Heroku. And in order to use Redis on Heroku, I need to install a build pack. Heroku has these things called build packs that enable additional functionality. And so the first thing I need to do is install the Heroku command line interface. I'm not going to go through that, but once you have that, uh, just make sure that you're logged in via Heroku login. Hit enter. Now I'm logged in. And now this is the command to add that build pack. Heroku add-ons create. Heroku-Redis mini. Application is, in my case, PodQuest, which you can see here. And just a note, it's going to add that Redis underscore URL from the ENV file that we had to specify on localhost for you. You don't have to add it here in your config vars. Normally, this is where you would put things that you put in that .env file on Heroku, but the build pack handles that for you. The last thing, if I wanted to test this out, is I first need to start Redis. And the way that you do that is you say Redis server. And that runs at that URL that you specified in your ENV. So here it's just localhost port 6379. And then I'm just going to start up my server the way I normally would. I have a separate task where I start up my front end. So now if I transcribe another episode, you're really not going to notice much of a difference in terms of the front end. But on the back end, it will be using that worker. I ask my podcast. What does this episode say about Microsoft? It answers me back. I can continue asking questions or I can open up my transcript. Or I can have it take me to a specific spot in the podcast. So. When is Joe Biden first mentioned in the podcast? As for the remainder of this podcast, we're going to be talking about the Biden administration's executive order on AI. And it'll jump you to the spot that you want in the audio file. So that's the basics of using a queue. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this is useful and good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.